Private equity has built up something of a negative perception after the attempted takeovers of certain iconic Australian brands. Sky News business reporter Kai Chow asked Avcal head Catherine Woodthorpe if private equity firms' reputation as vultures is fair. Absolutely not. Uh, it's interesting this concept about short-termism because most private equity companies for start own the assets that they buy for three to five years which compared to a publicly listed company having to report to analysts on a quarterly basis means that they can actually have a much longer term view. When they buy an asset they, uh, or when they buy a company, they are looking at how to make value out of that company. And the long term um, increase in, in the price that they get is largely from growing the company's underlying value through profitability and so on. It's not by selling off assets or doing any of that short-term financial engineering stuff which actually doesn't give you an uplift in the value of the company long term. Nevertheless, there must have been some bad apples that got it that reputation in the first place. I think it's a couple of things. One is historical. Back in the 80s, a, a range of operators, some of which were private equity, did carry out some of those sorts of raids and there were a lot of companies for which at that time you know 20 plus years ago now financial engineering did make a difference to the underlying value those days are gone but I think books like barbarians at the gates have, have a lingering um, notion in people's heads you know strong title everybody remembers it um, but the other thing is also that when you buy a company and you need to redirect um, it and it's often a strategic redirection which is looking at how the company can grow longer term and again outside of a quarterly analyst's report you can do some of these bigger strategic shifts and in the short term sometimes that means that divisions have to go or be re reorganized that sometimes jobs have to go in the short term um, but without fail netted up across the whole industry we add jobs, we add value, and, and we add money to the, the overall economy. So sometimes people see the very short-term reorganization of companies and, and assume that that's the only bit that's delivering. But in fact, that's often just the precursor and the prelude to a long-term strategic change in the company, which delivers a, a long-term profitability. Okay. And profitability adds jobs. So if private equity is in it for the long term, what are its advantages over, say, a listed company in terms of rescuing a business? It's interesting. There, there's, I think something that's really important to understand is that private equity is appropriate for some companies some of the time. And so people who have in the past mooted that you know, private equity is going to buy every company on the stock exchange don't understand that there's a lot of companies that are very suited to the stock exchange. However, there are some companies, and, and more often, in fact, it's been divisions of companies, not whole companies. In fact, only 10 companies netted up over the last five years have been completely delisted by private equity. More often, someone like a Maya or a Bradkin have been a, a division of a company. They've been either not strategic anymore to the overall growth of the group, or they need capital and the group can't afford to put capital into them. And so private equity has taken that division out of the parent company and done new strategic things with them most often putting capital in, quite often looking at the strategic direction of that group, given that it's no longer part of the parent company and can find its own place and its own marketplace. So those, those are the things that are very appropriate for private equity and mean that more often than not, as I said, it's divisions of public companies that are delisted or taken off the exchange rather than whole companies. How relevant is the fact that many private equity bids have been for high-profile virtually iconic Australian companies such as Qantas? I think it's certainly made um, it a concern for two reasons. One is that those companies have customers of a huge range of customers across the whole of Australia, um, much more so Qantas than, say, Coates. You know, another example might be, say, Rebel. Godfrey's vacuum cleaners, you know, every home has one, sees their ads on the television. So they have a lot of customers who want to know, well, is Qantas still going to be flying when I want it to and delivering the service? But also because they're fairly large companies, they have a lot of shareholders, which are beyond just the institutional ones, but a lot of mums and dads shareholders who also have an interest. And so naturally, the media can pick up on that interest. It's their job. And so they pick up these stories and run with them. And they turn those concerns and, and caution that might be in the public. Sometimes they take it a little bit further and try and turn that into 
a bit more fear-mongering. Um, quite often, the private equity companies or, or the target companies have contributed to that by not being more open and frank about where they're going and why they're doing these things. So the combination has sometimes led to suspicion in the public arena. So do you see private equity then improving on that transparency issue then? No question. Um, we, we learnt certainly over the last two to three years that it's very important for all the stakeholders to be alongside you on the journey. It's no use having the unions tugging one way, um, the shareholders deciding they don't want to sell the company to you or any of the other important stakeholder groups acting against you. So more and more it's been obvious, and I think Maya's a glowing example of this, um, it's been obvious that to, to work with all of those groups and to bring them alongside you, um, you need to be more transparent and more open about what your plans are. Are the current tight liquidity conditions an opportunity or a threat for private equity? Well, I'm a glass half full kind of person, so I always see that every threat has an opportunity associated with it. Um, Australian private equity has largely used Australian banks to provide the leverage that they've used to buy, buy companies with. And the Australian banks themselves, although a bit tighter with their money, are certainly still lending in that mid-market. Um, Australian private equity has also never leveraged itself up to quite the extreme that has possibly been seen overseas. And so um, there's more opportunity to continue similarly, maybe with slightly less leverage, but, but it's not got to be a dramatic change. And the other upside of the coin is, of course, that um, with the markets in a slightly more volatile situation, there's some good buys out there as well. So although I think all of my colleagues and, and members would say things will be tighter, credit will be more expensive, and therefore we won't pay such high prices, deals might be a bit slower, might take longer to, to um, stitch together the, the leverage that goes with the deal. But overall, any opportunity, any marketplace like this also offers opportunities.